The second to last menu at the top of the screen is the extensions menu. Here, there are items used to control which plugins and scripts are enabled, as well as their locations on your computer. The final menu at the top of the screen is the Help menu. Here, you can access the Form-Z website, technical support through email, as well as information about Form-Z and its operations. An important option to highlight here is you always have access to the complete Form-Z user's manual through the Form-Z manual viewer. This can be invoked a number of different ways, the most common being the manual option listed here in the help menu. Additional methods for accessing the manual are through the contextual menus available for many of the Form-Z palettes. You can also go to specific sections within the manual by clicking on tool icons or within the dialogs. Let's say, for example, you want to know more about the rectangle drawing tool, which is located in the third row of the modeling tools. Shift-clicking on this tool takes you to the point in the manual where you learn more about that particular tool. We shall next move on to examine the modeling toolbar that is by default arranged vertically in two columns at the left of your screen. It should be noted that the modeling toolbar, as well as the drafting toolbar, can be customized in a number of ways to suit your preference. The toolbar can be arranged horizontally by clicking on the green button in its upper right corner. It also can be moved anywhere on your screen, and its tools can be popped out and torn off as separate palettes. When you have chosen to display the toolbar horizontally, notice the palettes torn off are shown vertically. This is opposite when the toolbar is arranged vertically. Clicking on the same green button from a moment ago returns the toolbar back to the vertical format. Tool palettes that are now torn off will appear horizontally on your screen. Any one of the tools in the modeling toolbar can be selected with a single click of the mouse. This can either be performed directly from the toolbar or from the palette if it is already torn off. Here we have selected the rectangle drawing tool directly from the modeling toolbar as an example. You will observe that many of the icons have a red arrow in the top right corner while others feature black arrows. Arrows mean the tool is a member of a palette that can be torn off. Once a palette is torn off, the red arrows change to a single dot. The red arrows or the red dots indicate that a particular tool has a dialog. Tools with a black arrow do not contain dialogs, and when they are torn off from the modeling toolbar, tools with no dialog do not contain any arrows or dots within the icon. A dialog contains optional parameters that affect the execution of a tool. Most are different from one another depending on the tool. Some have a few options while others have many. However, despite the differences from dialog to dialog, they are accessed in the same manner. Double clicking on an icon invokes the dialog for that particular tool. Here, we have invoked the cube options dialog through the cube tool located in the first row. From the cube options dialog, you can predetermine a variety of parameters for the cube including its width, depth, and height. Also located within most dialogs is the help or question mark button shown in the bottom corner. This is an additional option for launching the Form-Z user's manual and clicking on it will take you to a section of the manual specific to the invoked dialog. Before we complete our discussion of Form-Z's toolbar, one particular tool and process, the picking process, requires some discussion. Picking is the most frequently used operation and it complements all the other operations of Form-Z. In its simplest form, you select or pick an object by using the pick tool to click on an edge of an object. You unpick by clicking with the pick tool anywhere on the screen away from the pickable entity. In Form-Z, you can select more than one entity at a time without being required to press the shift key, as other applications do. However, if you prefer to have to use the shift key, you can select the use shift key for multiple pick option available in the pick options dialog that is invoked by double clicking on the pick tool icon. A number of other options can be found here that affect picking. A few we would like to highlight are found under the area picking category located at the bottom of the dialog. Area picking is valuable in situations where you want to pick several entities in one operation 
rather than having to click on every object individually. The default area picking method is frame, and entities are picked by drawing a rectangle around them. The second method of area picking is the lasso method. Lasso picking is executed in the same manner by clicking and dragging the mouse. For both the frame and lasso picking, we drew a shape around the objects we wanted to pick. Alternatively, if we turn on the Pick Crossing option in the Pick Crossing Options dialog, we are able to pick by just crossing over the objects like this. For most operations of Form Z, the picking is included in the tool that executes an operation and it is not necessary to use the Pick tool. That is, with a specific tool, you click on an object and this causes both the objects to be picked and the operation to be executed. This works well when an operation needs to be applied on a single object, but does not suffice for applying it to many objects. When we wish to apply an operation on many objects, we use what is known as the pre-pick method. We use the pick tool to click on all the objects on which we wish to apply an operation. This pre-selects all these objects. We then select the tool of the operation we want to apply, and with it, we click anywhere in the project window. The operation is applied to all the pre-selected objects. For the pre-pick method, the entities are picked first and then the operator itself is activated. In the post-pick method, the entities are picked after the operator has been activated. For the next segment of this tutorial, we shall focus our attention on an additional set of tools at the bottom left of the Form Z window. These tools are called the Window Tools. Similarly to the Modeling Tools, the Window Tools can be torn off to become Floating Tool Palettes. However, these are tools of a different nature in that they affect the graphic environment of your Form Z project. When a modeling window is first opened, it is displayed with a grid and three orthogonal axes. The directions of the axis are marked with the plus and minus signs for each of the X, Y, and Z dimensions. The grid is displayed on the active reference plane, which initially defaults to the XY plane. The significance of the active reference plane is that graphic input is interpreted relative to that plane. The reference plane can be any one of three Cartesian planes, the XY, YZ, or ZX, or an arbitrary reference plane. You can change the active reference plane from the tools located in the first palette of the window tools. Window tools located in other palettes allow you to snap the cursor to a specific interval location, which is the grid snap tool, fourth from the left, as well as zoom in to a specific location within the Form Z window, which is the zoom tool, seventh palette. We cover snapping and zooming, as well as other navigation tools, in more detail in separate tutorials.